One company chops a favorite EV and their only mass produced EV off the menu. And another company that lured us in with the promise of a heavy duty pickup truck that can go 500 miles loaded makes an about face. GM cut the bolt off the menu. It's done. As many of us already thought a year or two ago that this time would come, now it is here. Uh, I got an official letter that says that they are going to end production of the Chevy Bolt EV and EUV by the end of this year. Not sure what the end of this year means because usually the model year changes for a legacy automaker happens in August. So late August, uh, you get the first new model year. So this would be 2024. So I'm not sure if they're going to produce a few model year 2024 models or not, or if they're just stopping in August and are done, or if they just carry on and keep them as 2023s till later in the year. Don't know, but I mean, we expect that it will come at some point, but it's kind of sad to see because this is a great EV. It's a favorite among many people and it's the only mass produced EV that GM currently has. GM announced the Equinox as an electric vehicle and I assume the Equinox is supposed to replace the Bolt. The Equinox is a little bigger than the Bolt EV, but maybe similar to the Bolt EUV. But will it be in the same price range? They announced a very low price between $25,000 and $30,000, if I remember correctly, for the Equinox, which would throw it into the price range of the Bolt. So it would be a good replacement possibly, but they have not started production of it yet. So that is an issue. If they're cutting the bolt out, what are they going to produce? There is not even a replacement ready at that time. So the question is why even cut the bolt out? I mean, they just did a refresh on the bolt EV and added the bolt EUV. I mean, that costs a lot of money to do so. And it seems like they definitely did not make the money back at this point. And it's a great seller, so why not keep those two models going? I guess part of the answer lies in the fact that the Bolt and the Bolt EUV, neither one is based on the Altium platform. GM's new platform, or actually not that new anymore, they already have a couple models out based on that platform, but I guess they want to switch everything over to that. And the Bolt is not. The Bolt actually was, uh, in my opinion, nothing besides a compliance car. Well, what GM didn't know back when, when they got in bed with LG and the Bolt was born several years ago, they didn't know that this car would be so great, have very few problems and will be a favorite among EV drivers. It was for us. We really liked that car. We had the 2020 Bolt EV for about 18 months, put about 18, 19,000 miles on it, and it was really great. We only had one little problem with uh, the stereo, and the stereo needed to be replaced under warranty. But that was basically the only problem we had with that car. But I don't think GM ever planned on keeping this car uh, for long. Their thing was let's get a cheap car going so we don't have to buy carbon credits from Tesla. <laughs> because their fleet emissions probably would have been way too high without the Chevy Bolt. But the Chevy Bolt turned out to be a great vehicle. It was also sold in Europe as the Ampera EV. And same thing over there. People just like that little guy. And it was a great car. So I don't see why they're cutting it now. It doesn't make any sense because they have no replacement for it yet. That is kind of weird. Another 
funny or weird thing is they're not even done with the recall. <laughs> they still have battery recalls on those bolts. They haven't even finished all the battery replacements yet. That's another weird thing. So I don't know. I mean, obviously if they stop production, they probably catch up quicker with the battery recall. But I don't know. The Bolt was really a favorite. A lot of people like that car. It was priced well. And uh, well, it is really sad to see that GM really is going to cut it. Um, yeah, I don't know. GM does many senseless things and I think this is one of them. Um, just looking back at the history a little bit. The EV1 was such a great vehicle. GM had the greatest electric car and well, they crushed it. I mean, literally they crushed all of them. So they took them all back. You could only lease them. You could never buy them and they crushed them all, which uh, was very sad. Now, if GM would have been a little smarter back when, they could be number one today in electric vehicles. There probably wouldn't be a Tesla if GM would have kept building on that EV1 rather than destroying it. And so I'm not sure taking the bolt away maybe is similar to crushing the EV1. It's not exactly the same, I get that, but I don't know. I think it's a bad move at this time. I think the bolt should stay in production for another few years until they actually have established uh, production on the, of the Equinox on their Altium platform and are really rolling and are able to deliver that Equinox and then maybe, yes, at that point, get rid of the bolt. But I think it's too early. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below what you think about all this. But uh, yeah, I think it's too early. Also along the same lines, um, there was a brand new startup company. It's about five years ago now, 2017, 2018, Atlas. Atlas came up um, out of the garage <laughs> of uh, Mark Hanchett, the CEO and founder of Atlas. And his intention was to build a pickup truck that can haul and do 500 miles on a single charge and also charge extremely fast. So you could get a full charge in like 10 to 15 minutes max. And I mean, wow, that sounds really cool. I would love to have such a truck. And uh, actually, <laughs> well, when he announced all this and it came together a little bit, they did some crowdfunding. I put a little bit of money in. Not rich, I don't have much money. <laughs> but uh, it would be a good chance if he actually pulls this through to hopefully make some money. But uh, yeah, they've been building on that pickup truck very slowly, did multiple crowdfunding sessions and um, even eventually went public. And uh, that was another weird thing going on there. <sighs> They came public at a high price, which made me rich for about a day. And the next day I was poor again because somehow the price fell extremely quickly. Not sure how. Rumors were that uh, Atlas employees were selling their shares at the high price. And thus the price dropped. We don't know. That is one of the weird things. Um, also a little bit weird what this company was always, uh, if, if you looked at uh, the founder, he's a bodybuilder kind of guy. He's pretty big and strong looking. And a lot of the management positions that were filled at Atlas, they're people that look like they came from the gym. So I don't know if he was picking up people at the gym to fill his management positions there at the company. It was a little odd, never knew if that really goes anywhere. Uh, eventually they got a building, they started working on the truck. They also announced a platform, an EV platform that would allow to uh, build on. Uh, you could build either a semi truck on it or a motorhome on it. You could have it as a two axle, three axle deal, all kinds of different versions, um, supposedly. 
But yeah, so they started and they was going and going slowly. The team grew slowly. And eventually, actually, they did reveal a pickup truck. It looked big, huge. Um, and I don't know that it was necessarily a good looking truck. <laughs> but it was a truck. We didn't know if it drives or not, really. Uh, the only thing they showed, they drove about one mile an hour, you know, closer to the camera with it. So, yeah, really, I don't know. Um, also, that is the company that had uh, done weekly updates and still does weekly updates about what they're doing. And some of those weekly updates were kind of weak. <laughs> I mean, it was really not much said. Yes, it was a, a few minutes of something. This is what we have done. But really nothing major ever was accomplished. And so now just here about... Uh, a week, 10 days ago, they announced uh, something major. And leading up to that, I already noticed quite some changes in the company. Uh, the pickup truck kind of was forgotten. We never really heard about the pickup truck anymore. But obviously a lot of people were interested in the pickup truck. That was the main reason they were supporting this company. And they kept asking about it and we were always told, oh yeah, yeah, the pickup truck is coming, we're working on it. But more and more, the company went towards batteries, battery manufacturing, and then eventually charging. I mean, they did their own charging tests and things already so they could prove that they could charge their pickup truck in about 10 minutes. But they did that on a very small single little battery cell kind of deal, not on a huge battery pack on a truck. So it became more and more clear that they're going to steer in a different direction. And sure enough, there was the announcement about something new. And new is the new name of the company Atlas. Atlas Motor Vehicles no longer exists. It's called new now. Not sure how they came up with the name, but doesn't really matter. Um, I was interested in the motor vehicle part. Uh, that was the one thing I wanted to see from this company is uh, motor vehicles. The pickup truck, the platform, and uh, now they, well, this thing will bring you the pickup truck, but first, we got to be able to charge those trucks. So we need charging stations and we need battery packs. We need to create the whole environment around the truck first before we can create the truck. And it's like, um, no, there is some chargers out there. I can charge you. I guess you need to make battery cells to make battery packs. I get that. But it sounds more like they're going for energy storage um, to, you know, bolster the grid. Probably they're, they're trying to be kind of like Tesla and selling mega packs in a way or something like that. I think that's what they're looking at um, because it's obviously it is much, much easier to just create a, a battery pack that can be deployed, especially on the grid, because the grid demand on a pack is relatively little. The demand on a battery pack in an electric car is extremely high. Uh, we have so many changing conditions all the time and it's quickly changing from, you know, taking the full amount of power out to putting a lot of power in to anything in between and all the temperatures that uh, these battery packs are exposed to and they're rattled down the road. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bumpy going down the road in an EV, right? Or, or in any car for that matter. Um, so, but if you make stationary batteries, you don't have to deal with any of those problems. It's basically uh, more or less a continuous discharge with a little peak discharge but there is nothing major in regards to recharging the pack. Um, we have a high discharge potential, but not so much a charge potential that is uh, somewhat limited. So it's much easier to create a pack for 
the grid or a home backup than it is actually for a, uh, uh, a car or a pickup truck. And uh, so that's the direction they're going. And so lately they also have shown off their charging and how fast they can charge. And I was not impressed. I'm sorry. Yes, they showed up. Oh, we can do one uh, megawatt. We, we do this no problem and we can do it for so long. Well, anybody can do that. It's really not that hard. Um, I mean, you, you create a cable that is liquid cooled. Um, it's not a problem. Those cables already exist. Actually, it's not like Atlas had to come up with something new. Those cables exist. And the more power you want to put out, the more uh, power units you stack inside a charger. So there's usually not a single unit. Um, there are... Uh, Depending on the charger manufacturer or charger size, there may be 25 kilowatts, 50 kilowatt units. Um, there may be a 100 kilowatt unit. But those are units and they're stacked on top of each other to get the total. And so putting more power out is really not a problem. Anybody can stack more of those units. Uh, what the part, the, the, the important part there is how to do that efficient because we still have quite a bit of losses there it heats up quite a bit and I watched one of their tests and they had this stuff in a container and they had multiple fans running in there because it got so extremely hot um, in that container and uh, so that is not very efficient so bringing the power out is relatively easy uh, the cables are out there to support this that is not really an issue uh, the technology has been there they're maybe the first to show it off publicly, but they really haven't invented anything yet at this point. And they still have not proven that they actually could charge a 100 kilowatt or 200 kilowatt battery pack in 10 or 15 minutes from basically zero to full. That still has not happened. So I don't think they have any new great technology, um, but their name is new now without anything new uh, and I'm, I'm just sad that this pickup truck that they promised us that they just basically abandoned it yeah they're saying it will come once they created the whole uh, ecological system around uh, supporting this truck uh, I don't know um, I think they found an easier way to make money and I wish him the best luck, but um, basically what's needed is this pickup truck. We need a company that brings us a pickup truck that can go 500 miles or at least 250 miles loaded um, that can haul a fifth wheel. Um, you know, that is what we need. And so I'm personally very disappointed with this about face that Atlas did, which is now new. And uh, yeah, that is sad to see. So another good thing that was supposed to come doesn't come. So what do you think about it? Were you even familiar with this company, Atlas Motor Vehicles? They've been somewhat known but many people actually never really knew about them the funny thing is early on i didn't know about them actually uh, one of my trainees said hey do you know about this company and i didn't but that was back when in like early 2018 and uh everything was still in the garage of the the ceo mark hanchett back when now they got a bigger building they're a bigger company they're a public company and yeah, now they're a new company. <laughs> so yeah, um, I wish them the best luck, but uh, I wish they would actually produce the pickup truck. Yeah, let me know what you think about those uh, two things about the, the Bolt EV and Bolt EUV being cut off the menu and about uh, Atlas changing their name is not the big deal, but basically cutting off the truck and no longer focusing on that pickup truck. Let me know what you think about it down below in the comments. In any event, I hope you like this video. Give us a thumbs up for it. 
Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so yet. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of the future videos we have coming. Also go back, check out our other videos. We got tons of videos, uh, road trip videos. That's a common concern for EV drivers. Long distance uh, road trip videos uh, where we use uh, public charging networks. So all kinds of interesting stuff. Winter road trip videos, that's another big concern. There's lots of tips and tricks hidden in those videos. Well, you just have to watch them, then they're not really hidden. <laughs> and also go down below into the description and uh, click the link to our Redbubble store. We got some cool merch there. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.